My strategy, when I look at events, it's awareness and lead generation. It's trying to be where the most type of buyers that we want to talk to and the people we want to influence are going to be. Events should be a good lead, good opportunity if we do everything right. Now, that means we might do everything right, though, and people never call you back. I think we do something that's very unique, maybe the only one of its kind, is we invested a couple of years ago in a, a relatively substantial R&D facility we call HyperWorks. This is a 50 50 acre mm. campus, now multi buildings, located just north of Austin. And this is where we bring customers and partners to demonstrate how the digital and physical worlds come together. So imagine being able to see wow. AI. The last week we had generals and admirals. We had 15 different countries represented at senior government wow. defense level leadership. But then we took them outside and showed them, you know, what's the state of, with autonomy, with drones, with ground vehicles. We showed them what is AI capable capable of doing today to keep wartime readiness? How do you keep your aircraft, your 50, 60, 70 million dollar aircraft operational? I don't believe in big events. And uh, uh, my take here is that the bigger event is, the more useless it is. Because it's very often <laughs> like the vanity fair and it's like boosting egos of marketing leaders out there. So they're yeah. like throwing in incredible sums of money. And it's so hard to really stand out again in this vanity fair. And at the same time, people are over-informed. They are overwhelmed. So if you really want, you know, to get like meaningful connections with your users, if you really want to sign up, let's say, a partner, my very strong recommendation is that would go to smaller events. So we've started expanding our in-person events where like we exhibit at the event, we angle perhaps to try to get a speaking slot. We generally, you know, work with various folks at FastSpring in order to help them earn speaking slots here or there. In terms of experiential, we don't have anything on the roadmap for that, but that's a great idea, by the way, on the movie theater piece. But we do have more traditional micro events that are kind of owned events that would effectively feature, you know, thought leaders. And then for kind of smaller groups, we haven't done a large company conference. We did that a lot at uh, WP Engine. We had a virtual one called Decode, and then we had a, an annual one called the WP Engine Summit. Anything where you can give people a chance to commune, trade ideas, I find those opportunities to be gold. We're not spending $500 a head on these things, but we're doing like dinners in cities like New York and San Francisco that are incredibly well attended by very yeah. senior people. And the strategy there is to get senior people from prospect companies and from customer companies, along with one of our executives. So our CEO, fortunately, is very extroverted, loves meeting customers and prospects. And he's yeah. he's pulled out private rooms at restaurants and wow. sold out private rooms and restaurants in New York, San Francisco and other cities. So I think he you either have to guilt people into going for sure, you know, by making it really fancy or to your point, invite as many as people as possible, qualified people as possible in a very casual setting.